Hello guys, uh, welcome back. Welcome back to Chintu School of Statistics and Data Science. And we are here with an extremely interesting problem. Interesting problem because it involves a lot of, it seems like it's a really tough one. It's a very complicated one algebraically, but um, there exists a beautiful, um, a very holistic uh, solution to this. And that's why I'm discussing this with you live. So it's asked that if X is a real number, then what is the limit? It's like double limit. It's like the two variables M and N out here. So how do you calculate this limit? And it's an iterated limit. That means you first calculate one limit and then upon that you calculate another limit. So it's a sequence of two univariate limits, okay? And that makes sense. That makes sense. That really makes sense. So now the question is that, yeah. So now the question is, what is the limit of this? So let's sort of understand this. So just a hint is that, if you observe the options, the options kind of give you a direction or sort of kind of hint towards how to proceed towards this. And this is a problem for ISI and SAT 2018 PSA problem 10. So it is hinting you towards a plausible direction of approach. So what can be that plausible direction of approach? So it's seen in option C and D that maybe the idea of irrational, rational may be playing a role in this. And that's where you need to start from. That's where the, that's, uh, that's the hint given there, okay? Maybe it's not the true solution, but maybe that, that can be a good hint. Maybe it's directed to mislead you. You don't know, but that's a very good approach because you don't know otherwise how to approach it, right? So let's start from that point of view and let's go ahead to the solution from here. So it's us that, so cos, so let me write the function very properly cos to the power m, n, sorry, m factorial times x times pi. So let me write it a bit differently so that some x times pi, this will make sense. You will let her understand. Okay. And then first, may, the limit n tends to take as uh, you calculate this. And then after this, you calculate limit n tends to, m tends to infinity, okay? So first n tends to infinity, that means this is going to infinity, okay? So you can understand that cos, the first idea that should come to your mind is that cos x or cos any a is less than or equal to one greater than or equal to minus one. So cos square a must be less than or equal to one greater than or equal to zero, right? So therefore cos square to the power two and a must be less than or equal to one greater than or equal to zero. So if, cos square two to the power n a is less than one always and as for any a and n goes to infinity, it will go to zero. So it depends upon whether cos a takes the value one or zero or not. We will see and observe and discover in the solution. So, so therefore the thing is that in here, n is going to infinity, m is kind of fixed. So let's take m to be fixed. Let's take m to be fixed. Let's call it m naught or m naught. So to convert it into a single variable limit, so we take limit n tends to infinity cos to the power n m naught factorial x pi. And you don't know pi, right? x, right? So as we have seen that X can be taken as two options from the one is rational, Q, one is irrational. So if it's rational, let's call it P by Q, right? And for irrational, we will see that. If it's P by Q, guys, then observe that M factorial X So this, let's call it P by Q, right? So understand that the idea is that, let's let, so this M factorial is nothing but one into two into order M, fact, M not factorial, right? M not, sorry. But that, now there, there can be two possibilities. Either M not, like Q lies before M not, or Q 
is greater than m not greater than equal to m not less than equal to m not or greater than m not right but observe one thing very carefully m is on the other hand whatever is this so okay so let's say q is less than equal to m not so we have fixed m if q is less than equal to m not this is not a multiple of pi this is not a multiple of pi so remember this one result cos x square is equal to 1 that is cos x is equal to plus minus 1 either 1 or plus minus 1 if and only if x is a multiple of pi so therefore you observe that this is not a multiple of pi because q does not divide q is less than equal to m not take this case q is less than equal to m not This is not a multiple of pi. So understand this. For this case, so the first case is that. Let me take a new slide. We take x to be rational. In this rational case, this is how you should write down this rational case if it's a subjective problem. In rational case, what you do is that you take m. not the first okay m equal to m not and you take that q is greater than m not it's not divisible so therefore what we get that cos 2 to the power n m not factorial x times pi is not a multiple of pi hence it's not plus minus 1 hence is always less than 1 for any x for any x where q is greater than m not it's always less than 1 and n tends to infinity so this must so therefore the inside one is always less than 1 square of that because it's not plus minus 1 hence this must go to 0 right why since m not factorial times x is not an integer hence cos square m not is never plus minus 1 so it's always less than 1 and greater than 0 hence this must go to 0 hold to the power n as n tends to infinity right always great what if q is greater than equal to m not and less than equal to m not if less than equal to m not then m not factorial times x must be an integer why because It will be one dot dot dot. Since q is greater than m not, somewhere q will come up dot 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 m not factorial times p by q. So q will cancel. This is the integer. So therefore, cos square in pi will always be one, and hence the n goes to infinity. It will always go to one. That's so easy peasy, right? So therefore. this is the idea that happens if q is greater than m not then this is going to zero if q is less than equal to m not then q is going to infinity it's going to one now observe this very carefully there's an m tends to infinity out there so if you fix x is equal to p by q let's say Seventeen by hundred one, and there's now you're fixing this, right? So now there's after this there's m tends to infinity, right? Limit m tends to infinity. So m is increasing after this. M is increasing after this. So if this hundred one is fixed, so understand that the sin limit n tends to infinity cos to to, to the power n. m not m factorial x by pi x is equal to this will be going to 1 for q less than equal to 101 for it will go to 1 for this let's call it p by q this will go to 1 if this is a integer right or it's in terms of m right so q is an integer 
q is an integer so it's let's say here it's let me take an example 17 by 101 so this will go to 1 if m m is se zyada hai if m is greater than this because it will become an integer if m is less than 0 less than 101 it will not get cancelled and it will always go to 0 right for this p by q so if you fix p by q it always be for m greater than or equal to k q it will go to 1 if m less than q it will go to 0 right so therefore what happens what is the final form it turns out that limit n tends to be fixed p by q with let n tends to infinity cos to the power n m factorial x pi this is going to 1 if m is greater than or equal to q and going to 0 if m is less than q right this is what is happening now above this q is fixed so here q is a fixed number in that case it was 101 so therefore if you put another limit of m tends to infinity over here you see that what is happening after a certain point after this fixed q for x fixed after a certain point for x fixed and rational after a certain point m is going to one m is always one hence what happens this limit as m goes to infinity this goes to one always because this is up till a certain point after a certain point this goes to one right it's like this let's say m is an integer it's like this so zero 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 then suddenly one 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 and hence it goes to one final limit right so that that what happens for q, q is that x is a rational number what happens for x it's always goes to one for x irrational this m factorial x is pi is never an integer of pi never hence cos squared 2 n m factorial x pi is always less than one greater than zero and hence this goes to zero because always less than one okay hold to the point is always less than one hence it must go to zero that's a basic idea right it's a very beautiful idea and see m factorial x is always less than for a fixed time it's always so it must go to zero right so say if it's not a multiple of pi that's the basic idea and that's where the beautiful idea of uh, this thing comes up it's a very beautiful problem now i will leave this so therefore what happens if you observe the problem what's asked in the problem is asked that it exists if and only if x is irrational because always zero if x is rational or sorry if x is if and only if x is rational no it does not exist for any x sorry it exists for all x but yeah it exists for all x it exists for all x i'm sorry the answer is it exists for all x for different x is a rational number then it's uh, always one if x is a rational number it's always zero so therefore what do we get we get that if x is a rational number f of x is equal to one if x is rational zero if x is irrational and if you observe this is nothing but the richlet function this is nothing but richlet function which is all everywhere discontinuous this is a beautiful function to show that it's a different function which is everywhere discontinuous everywhere that's a beautiful idea right so i hope you enjoyed this problem now I'll put my third problem for you is this that what if you reverse the limit of n tends to infinity and m tends to infinity reverse the limit and also what if you take the both the limits together limits that's a different from the iterated limits right so try out this the same thing try out this reverse limit reverse reverse iterated limit and the two limits together and try it this out okay i hope you will enjoy it i hope you enjoy solving this problem if you have enjoyed learning something learning something beautiful how from a discrete setup limit setup the whole thing of richlet function came up the beautiful 
every right discontinuous digit function came up. If you enjoyed it, do like, share, and subscribe and comment. Hit the bell icon for getting you know notifications of the content if you want to support us. Thank you so much, guys, for joining in and stopping by and watching the video and learning a bit from it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you are interested in courses of mathematics, probability and statistics for ISIM or ID JMMS, anything you are preparing for, then do check out the description links in the description box below. All the best, guys. I will see you in the next video. Stay tuned and stay blessed. Have a great day ahead.